All right, guys. It's about 20 to 3. It's still Sunday, 9 14. 71 degrees, 70 degrees. My batteries were all charged. And for my friends who are international, almost 19 degrees centigrade. Um, William Statton. Uh, you know, I've had this solar set up sitting here forever, which is basically a couple of solar cell cells, a charge controller, and that one battery. And I've always wanted to take it further by putting a um, an inverter on it and actually have some usable electricity out here. Um, given the fact that the solar panels are inside the window, I'm really not generating all that much. Maybe an amp or two with the sun beating on the window. He actually took it the step further. He actually got the um, the inverter on there and he's got some compact fluorescent lights in his garage and he's actually got it working. And he's discovering um, certain things about how his uh, um, the inverter he got and how well it starts up you know, two or three or four f compact fluorescent lights at the same time and all. Um, so if anybody is thinking of putting some solar energy just in a small little application and all, uh, he kind of, you know, grinds through some of the pitfalls and you guys could see what he did and how he laid it out and all. I, y you know, um, it, it's it's interesting. He and I... Uh, if I have a, what do they call him, doppelganger somewhere. He's he's my uh, doppelganger out in Ohio. Uh, he, he seems to enjoy a lot of the same stuff, and we follow a lot of the parallel paths. Not exactly the same things that we do, but like he was putting 12-volt CDIs in a, in a bunch of... Um, um, units that he was swapping so he was getting Chinese 12 volt CDIs and putting them in units and after seeing his videos on how he did that I came up with the wow rather than use the 12 volt from the bike I could put batteries in a box and have a completely portable CDI that you could just hook up yourself so I've kind of jumped off a bunch of his ideas and hopefully he's uh, jumped off a couple of my ideas to improve to improve things in in our life in his life and my life but it is kind of interesting a lot of the stuff he works on it's uh it's uh cool so um yeah if you guys have a few moments go see my uh my buddy Bill there um Give him some uh, encouragement. I enjoy his videos, so perhaps if you guys encourage him, he'll uh, he'll make some more videos that I really enjoy watching, and hopefully you guys to do also. Second video, and this is going to be a little quicker because I've already I'm almost out of memory. I wanted to spend a few minutes looking at this motor and figuring out what was going on, so I went through it and. Uh, Here's some smell of vision. How's it smell? Huh? Let me give you a hint. Very bad. Um, small animal crawled in there and died. So that's not good. Took a look at the carburetor, and though this is free, isn't able to move, it looks like the generator or the uh, the governor here, right, is screwed up. Hopefully I'm showing you my fingers. Yeah, it's not moving here. According to the person I bought this from, he indicated that it was rebuilt. And I have the feeling whoever rebuilt it was a bit of a clown. Uh, didn't quite know what they were up to. But he says it was rebuilt. And then you see things like... See the way this is broken? And this is broken. Normally that happens. I mean, it could have fallen on it and broke it. But um, to me, the way it's pulled out a little bit, and I don't, I don't really see it broken there. I have the feeling it broke while they were trying to remove the pulley. I do see a scar from the pulley all the way in there. So maybe they had the pulley off, but they broke it trying to take it off. I'm not sure. Um, gas line feels like an antique. 
it, it does it does I don't know I'm not sure if it was this thing has the um, gear started here I think I'm pointing in such a way that you can see it right so we'll start a cobalt on here or one could use one of the old belt starters with the alternator on it um, I am not from a wiring point of view I'm not I don't think this has an alternator I think that's just the on off so I'm not sure probably some of these numbers could be decoded I don't know if you guys could see these numbers especially now that I'm blocking them with the sound let's look at them upside down um, if you see kind of an 83 here right there I think you guys can see it in 83 so this is a 1983 vintage here's the plaque the placard so it does when I was a kid, they said if the engine rebounded sharply when you did that, the compression was good. There's probably, you know, obviously people put compression gauges on it. One of my uh, tests, and I didn't do it before I bought it, I should have. If there's an air filter on there, that's normally a good sign. So I just discovered there was an air filter, so that's a real good sign. This is not seized in the engine, which also kind of makes me a little happy. To me, this strikes me as if it's one of the engines that should be a fixed speed, where you there's a rod that goes through here, and you kind of pull it up. And uh, in between these two are a couple of bolts where you adjust nuts, and that fixes the speed for it. It's choke right here that he's got locked off. I don't know. I think I do want to fire it up to see what kind of situation I'm in. It weighs a lot, um, but if it's no good, I'm not going to get my money out of it, it to uh, to get to get uh, at, at eight cents a pound. It weighs approximately a uh, hundred pounds, eighty pounds, whatever. So it's about six dollars worth of scrap. If it's a if it's a piece of junk, I paid a hundred dollars for six pounds worth of scrap. If it's uh, if it's any good, I've uh, I've done well because this is an expensive motor. Anyway, folks, thank you for watching. Thanks for commenting. Thanks for subscribing. Uh, I'll catch you on the next episode of the Horde. Till then, remember to keep your feet down, your head up, and enjoy your life. Oh, by the way, I do also have a second one of those a Jacob, that said Jacobson on it, I think. So if the engine's no good, I do have the block on that one without a carburetor, and that has a carburetor, so I guess I could put the two of them together. See, it does pay to have a hoard. Anyway, take care, folks. We'll catch you on the next episode. Bye now.